Hello, my name is Michael Lambert. Now, some of the few who've uh, been kind enough to watch my videos in the past will, will, will notice possibly that there's something slightly different about me today, and that is that, well, I'm, I'm wearing a hat. It's actually uh, one of a series of four hats, all with uh, messages concerning Brexit on them. And uh, I'm happy to say that they're all now available. They've arrived and they're available to purchase from my uh, my website, which is ml44.com. So if you're interested in owning such a beautiful piece of millinery, then please go and have a look. Now, I thought to celebrate the arrival of these hats, uh, I'd, I'd just look back over the history of Brexit and just uh, remind ourselves a little bit of what's happened and how we got to be in the uh, the present uh, slightly catastrophic state that we we are in with uh, seemingly everything everything going wrong now it all started with uh, Nigel Farage he uh, he, he was a member of the European Parliament from 1999 to, to 2020 for 20 years he was a member for 20 years he drew a very substantial salary, the current salary for a member of the European Parliament is €107,000 a year. And he would have no doubt claimed every expense under the sun. And uh, I'm sure he's now drawing a nice pension. But uh, throughout his time there, I don't think he was ever very committed to doing anything apart from complaining about Brexit. Now, it seems to me that uh, Farage is one of those people, a bit like Trump and a bit like Johnson, with no deep political philosophy, but somebody who just likes being famous, likes being in front of the cameras, likes being the centre of the attention. And he found that if he if he complained enough about Brexit, if he kept saying how uh, 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 the EU was so corrupt and awful organisation and wasteful and so on, and how we'd be so much better off if we could just leave, if he kept on with that, people wanted to listen to it. And because he's got the sort of gift of the gab, people did listen to it, and he was broadcast a lot. For example, he appeared on Question Time over a period of 20 years 35 times. Well, that is a huge amount of uh, uh, publicity, national publicity, for what was a very minor, minor party at the time, which was which was UKIP. Nonetheless, he banged on and on and on, and uh, uh, when it came to the towards the 2015 um, general election, David Cameron, call me Dave, he uh, he was a bit worried that UKIP might take uh, take votes from. Uh, uh, from the Conservatives and, and so he said well um, if if we win the election if I win the election I'll have a, a referendum in the meantime he went off to see if he could negotiate a better deal but he uh, didn't seem to get much out of, out of that he could hardly really expect much better than what he already got anyhow uh, the election took place and, uh, and, and and so in due course he had to he had to hold the referendum now everybody, uh, everybody thought that uh, uh, Remain would win, you know, because to leave would have been absolute utter madness. But nonetheless, all these characters started coming out of the woodwork uh, uh, and uh, talking about how terrible the EU was, and particularly about how much better off we'd be if we left, and how we could leave without it be any cost whatsoever, we'd be just as well off out of it, and so on. And I want to just quote you some of the things that were said because these 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 statements were really quite important, quite influential. For example, uh, uh, um, David Davis, remember him? He was our first uh, uh, trade negotiator. He said uh, there will be no downsides, only a considerable upside. Liam Fox, who previously had been a, a, um, a defence secretary, he said uh, the free trade agreement that we will have to do with the European Union should be one of the easiest in human history. Daniel Hannan, uh, he was an MEP, quite outspoken, and uh, he, he, he said, uh, absolutely nobody is talking about threatening our place in the single union, single market. Michael Gove said, uh, the day after we vote to leave, we hold all the cards and we can choose the path we want. Sounds really good, it? yeah? Nothing to lose. Mog, Rhys Mog, he kept on ad nauseum over and over and over again saying, if only we voted to leave the EU, we'd have cheaper food, clothing and footwear. I, I, I'm not sure if he's been to Sports Direct late, lately for his trainers or his tracksuit or whatever, but I think you'll find that not cheaper. I think if he goes buying, buying the weekly groceries down at uh, 
at, at Aldi, I think you'll find the prices are not are not cheaper. And uh, Boris Johnson, he uh, he assured the nation that uh, if we leave, British people will still be able to go and uh, work in the EU, to live, to travel, to study, to buy homes and settle down. See, all been the same. There will continue to be free trade and access to the single market. You see, all just, just, just wonderful. Nothing to lose by leaving. And so, uh, uh, other people like uh, uh, all these right wingers on the uh, uh, in Parliament on the back, back, back benches of the uh, Conservative Party, people like Bill Cash, for example. You know, guy should have been. Uh, he, he should be. He should be. You know, take it easy. He should be resting. Should have been in a in a home for quite some time, I would have thought. He's completely do lally in Duncan Smith. People like that. All, 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 all said, no, no, we've got to leave, got to leave, got to leave. We're much better off we get away from these dreadful foreigners. All these foreigners keep coming over here, taking all our jobs, you know, working in our hospitals and things like that. So the referendum took place. Now, Farage had always said that if the result was 52-48 uh, to... Uh, uh, to remain, he would have fought on. That would have, though he wouldn't have settled for that. That, 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 that. that would not have done. He would have just keep, kept campaign, campaigning. As it turned out, it was 52 48 to leave. And then we were all told to shut up. Those of us who didn't like the result were told to shut up, accept it. It's all over. Move on. And so uh, when the, uh, the vote was to leave, uh, Dave, he said, he said, oh, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I don't want anything to do with this. And he was off, whistling away. At the time, I think we all thought he was a, a, a reasonably decent sort. And then it turns out afterwards that he started he started lobbying for a firm, an Australian firm called Greensill, to, to try and get some, some, some deals with the government or to get some loans and so on. He was badgering... Uh, Sunak, who was then the Chancellor, and he's badgering the Bank of England and various other ministers, badgering, badgering, because he stood to make millions and millions, you know, another trough in the, another trial, snout in the trough. So anyway, Theresa May then became the uh, uh, the Prime Minister. She was completely clueless, had no idea whatsoever, didn't really have much natural authority, and she was constantly, constantly badgered by the uh, uh, the ERG, the right wingers in her party, she kept trying to get uh, make progress in Parliament, and she kept being defeated, kept being defeated. And in the end, she said, "Well, you know, I'm going to have to have an election, and uh, I, I'm going to have to uh, you know, improve my majority." And, uh, and so she decided to call it a general election. Now she was up against Jeremy Corbyn, who was then the leader of the Labour Party. Now Corbyn, uh, uh, I mean, he's got some fanatical supporters, but he's somebody who's totally unelectable. I mean, you know. The British will never vote for an extreme left-wing uh, prime minister, and uh, so she was up against a very weak uh, opposition. Nonetheless, she managed to run such a bad campaign that she ended up losing her majority altogether. So she found she had no majority, and in order to remain in power, she had to do a deal with uh, the DUP in Northern Ireland. This is a party which communicates by shouting. You know, they're really, really very, very, very angry. Oh, my word, yes. And they did a deal with her, got loads and loads of money off her, and said they'd, they'd, they'd keep her in power. So she battled on, battled on, and uh, kept losing in Parliament and making very little or, 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 or no progress. And in the end, people got fed up, and they started putting in letters to the 1922 committee. When there were enough letters, there was uh, an election, and St. Boris Johnson won, and he became the, uh, the new leader of the... Uh, Conservatives and, and Prime Minister. This is what he'd always wanted. So uh, Johnson was in charge, and from that moment onwards, that was the end of uh, that was the end of responsibility or of uh, um, that was the end of order. Uh, instead, there was chaos and uh, incompetence and dishonesty. All crept into government uh, under the watch of uh, of Johnson. Johnson's priority seemed to be getting expensive wallpaper paid for by somebody else and getting holidays paid for by somebody else uh, and getting a big plane with you and Jack on and just spending money on himself having a good time having a laugh because that's all he wanted to do have a laugh and hell everybody else and uh, he, he he obviously didn't enjoy the job he spent most of his time wearing high his jackets in different different factories having photo opportunities and it's an absolute disaster as a prime minister
But nonetheless, after a while, he decided that uh, he wanted to get a, a bigger majority in order to get Brexit done. That was the big message. So uh, an election took place in December 2019, and uh, with 43% of the vote, Johnson ended up with a majority of 80. So he then became unassailable. He could then do anything he wanted to. He was master of the universe. Nobody could challenge him. And uh, one of the conditions on becoming, uh, um, uh, or standing as a Conservative in that election in 2019 was that you had to be pro-Brexit. And uh, even though uh, loads and loads and loads of, uh, uh, of Tories, including many of the most senior Tories, were uh, dead against Brexit and wanted to remain, they all had to change their mind. They all had to say, oh, yes, no, 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 if that's what you want, if you want to change my mind, yes, no, 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 I'll support Brexit now. And so you ended up with a, a cabinet, two-thirds of, of whom were people in favour of remain, and yet from that day onwards they had to say how, how good Brexit was and defend Brexit at every opportunity. And, and you ended up with the sort of sort of people we've got in, in, in the cabinet at the moment. I mean, people like, for example, um, um, Grant Shapps, you know, a jack of all trades. I, I don't know what his job is today. I, I think I don't know, in the week he was Defence Secretary. He's been, had five ministerial posts in one year. He gets these jobs because he's got the gift of the gab and he can always, uh, like, like like Michael Gove in a way, or, or he's got an answer for any anything. Good performer on, on, on television. So he's Minister of Defence. And then there was uh, Oliver Dowden, a, a guy who's ended up, uh, I think, to, to, to his surprise, more than ours, uh, 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 as the uh, Deputy Prime Minister. His guy always looks as though he's about to burst into tears. I mean, just, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, I just, a, a person like that without any, any gravitas, any authority, uh, it just, just dull, dull, dull. And then you've got Madame Pooh. Madam Mayor and the Mayor, uh, 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 Theresa Coffey. I, I mean, how can a woman like that be running the, uh, running DEFRA? Again, all three of those, all three of them voted to remain, but they're all been very keen on, on Brexit now, making Brexit work, managing the chaos. Now, Johnson then, having got a, a stonky majority, he had to get Brexit done. And he needed a, a sort of an, a, a, an idiot to to be a negotiator, to negotiate a deal. And he happened upon uh, Lord Gormless, or he wasn't at the time, but at the time he was known as David Frost. Now, Frost had been the, uh, he, he, he'd been the uh, chairman of the Whiskey Distillers Federation. And just before the referendum in 2016, this is what he said. He said, our interest is to be part of the biggest possible market with the fewest possible barriers. The European single market gives us that. The European free trade agreements give us that. Why would we want to depart from that? You see, really strong pro-Brexit. He could see the benefits of Brexit. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, pro-pro-Remain. Then he became uh, Johnson's uh, little puppy to go off and do the deal. Johnson put him in the cabinet, put him in, uh, he put him in the House of Lords, and suddenly there's this little Captain Mannering, this little uh, Mr. Pickwick, suddenly he's so big, for his, but oh, so overconfident. I mean, even now, having, having to go through this deal, which is a disastrous deal, uh, he, he, even now he's through the pages of the Daily Terror, he's advising the government, giving them advice as to whether they're doing the right thing, the wrong thing, tells them what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. Completely not a gormless word. Anyway, he went off and uh, did this deal, came back, and it's a famous photograph of Johnson with his arms stretched up in the air, cheering on this, uh, I mean, got Brexit done, got it, got it done, got it done, wonder, wonder. Lord Gormless had negotiated this fantastic deal. Within a few weeks, everybody realised it was a complete and utter nonsense deal. It was a rubbish deal. We decided we couldn't accept it. Signed it, agreed it negotiated it international contract oh no no we didn't realize it wasn't we didn't realize it wasn't quite quite going to work out Rand and lewis got up in uh, parliament said that uh, we intended to break our agreement with the eu in a i think what was he said he said a very specific and uh, a, a, a limited way 
anyway, things muddled on, and uh, then we had COVID, didn't we? And had all the corruption, which we've talked about in other videos, the endless corruption, whereby so many uh, uh, um, friends and uh, associates of, uh, of senior Tories uh, got immensely rich. We had, uh, 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 what's her name, Dido Harding uh, uh, being given a budget of £37,000 million pounds to, to set up some test and trace, most of which only part of the money was spent, £20 billion was spent. 20,000 million, uh, much of it on consultants, consulting how to test and trace. Um, it, it, it was just a period of absolute chaos, really. And uh, then with COVID, uh, we all remember Johnson on television, looking very serious, telling us all, we always stay home, mustn't go out the front door, mustn't do this, mustn't do that, mustn't speak to anybody, mustn't do it. All locked down whilst he's having parties in Downing Street. Party after party after party. So then people started to lose uh, lose confidence in him, and I think uh, he, he, he was on borrowed time. And it was only when the uh, the Chris Pincher incident happened that, uh, uh, that his time was up, that people started resigning. Now, what happened with Chris Pincher is that he was a, a guy who Johnson has appoint, had appointed as, uh, as Deputy Chief Whip. And... Uh, uh, Johnson had known at the time that this pincher had a, a bit of a reputation for being a, a, a bit sort of um, behaving inappropriately at times. And it turned out he went uh, to the Carlton Club, which is a sort of posh, uh, pro, very uh, conservative sort of gentleman's club. And he'd, uh, during the course of one evening, he groped two different members of parliament. I have to say I'm quite intrigued about this, this this sort of groping. I don't quite know how, how it works. I mean, to what groping? I mean, you sort of grab a handful of somebody's dangly bits, or, or, or you do it from the back, or the front, I mean, and what happens? I mean, do you squeeze tight, or what what, 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 what do you do? What, what, what is groping in that uh, context? And having been uh, 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 presumably rebuffed by the first person he gro groped, a bit odd to go off and grope somebody else, isn't there? But anyway, when it was found out that Johnson knew this guy had a bit of a record, uh, um, everyone turned against him. And of course, we know Javid and uh, Sunak uh, resigned and then everybody else resigned. And, and that was the end of Boris Johnson. And I think it's pretty fair to say, I've said all, all, all along, he'll, he will never return to frontline politics. He's never going to be prime minister again. I mean, he's just, just damaged goods. So then, of course, we got, uh, we got Dim Lizzy, didn't we? Liz Truss, surely the dimmest, dullest, most insipid person has ever, ever held a senior political office. A woman with the charisma of a wet dish cloth. A just really dreadful dull woman. She became Prime Minister and she went off and uh, met the Queen, shook hands with the Queen. I, the Queen was said, sort of, I can't face this woman again. The Queen died a week later. And... Uh, so it was a couple of weeks of mourning, and then she had uh, she got to a stride, and she, with her friend, uh, Quasi Quateng, Quasi, he's very, very clever, you know. He got a scholarship to Eton, he got a double first to Cambridge, absolutely brilliant, brilliant academically, he's been working in the city and so on. But he's like, he's like those very clever professors, the scientists, extremely, extremely clever, but they can't tie their shoelaces up. And old uh, uh, Quateng, he thinks he's so clever, very arrogant stuck up at it and he and uh, and Lizzie they, they, they came up with this budget uh, and the whole theme of the budget really was just reduce taxes for rich people make rich people a lot richer like all their friends and then somehow that would that would save the economy as it turned out it cost us all 74 billion it was an absolute disaster and Liz had to go Liz who had these very expensive tastes Liz who who went to give a a, a speech in Australia and and uh, Instead of going on a, a, a commercial airline where she could have flown first class for maybe uh, six or seven thousand pounds a person, perhaps three or four in a group, now instead she took the uh, the government's plane at a cost of five hundred thousand pounds. A plane that had to stop twice to refuel, a, a plane that took a lot longer than a scheduled flight. But in, when she was challenged about it, she said, "Well, she had to do that because they might have been discussing government business during the flight, and it might have been overheard, so they couldn't go on a public airline." I think the answer to that is probably don't talk government business if you're on a, on a public airline. 
and then uh, of course she went to Achievening, didn't she, as uh, uh, um, the Grace and Favour residence for uh, uh, foreign ministers. And, uh, and after she left, they found that uh, they found that some of the towels and the bathrobes were missing. They gave her a bill for twelve thousand pounds. I mean, how shabby can you be? How miserable! Can you be? This woman was our prime minister. I mean, can you imagine it? And she followed uh, uh, Johnson with all that chaos. And we wonder why we're in the mess that we're in now. So she went. Along came uh, Rishi Robot. Shiny Rishi. Shiny hair. Shiny face. Shiny suits. Shiny shoes. All really shiny. Fluorescent shiny teeth. Bobbing up and down like a Churchill dog. Nodding, nodding away. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Frightened of everybody. Really got no idea. He was uh, a chance exchequer at a time when he was giving away money because of COVID. He uh, presided over all the money that was spent on uh, uh, on uh, test and trace and all this PPE scandals. He uh, he came up with the uh, uh, bounce back loans and, and set them up without any checks whatsoever. So that anybody, anybody could just go online and get a £50,000 loan. There were as many £50,000 loans as the night. He was responsible for that. He, he was responsible for not having insured against interest rates going up and apparently the cost was billions. He, he, he's the guy who asked a homeless man when he was doing a photo op in a, in a, in a, in a sort of refuge for, for homeless people. He asked him if he'd like to work in the city. Did clueless. And he's now, he's now the Prime Minister. He, he's now getting Brexit done. Oh yeah. And the funny thing is, you know, listening to him, I mean, just everything's brilliant. And just everything is, we're just doing better than every, better than France, better than Germany, better than Japan, better than everybody. More money's going to health, more money's going to education, more money's going to everywhere. Oh, he's just such a good job. He's got uh, Jeremy Hunt as, uh, as Chancellor. Jeremy, I mean, he, he ran a few small businesses in the last one he ran. He's managed to sell and get, get, get a few million quid for it. But I mean, he's got no financial city background. And he's a chance exchequer. He's telling us all that time and time again, he says, we're going to become a, a worldwide uh, technology superpower. Hey, this little Rishi, Rishi Robot, he's calling all the uh, heads of all the big uh, IT companies all over the world to come to London in November because he's going to tell them all how he's going to police police the internet and he's going to police uh, IT and the AI he's going to police, um, uh, advanced, uh, yeah, artificial intelligence. He's going, to, he's going to police it all in his spare time. And in the meantime, he's obsessing about the little boats. Him with his... Uh, <clears throat> Psy psychopathic n nut job uh, uh, of a home secretary obsessing about these little boats no matter about global warming no 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 we can't talk too much about that because if you remember what happened in Uxbridge yes they voted uh, uh, against ULES oh yes that's how they won so you don't want to talk about global warming no 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 the economy the economy's doing so well don't talk about it. no little boats little boats we can just stop the little boats bonkers absolutely bonkers clueless and of course the whole world is laughing at us we, we, we've lost any any respect we ever had we're just a joke I think uh, Kim Jong-un in Korea he must he must say look there's a country here look in, in the West a country which is actually following our policies keep foreigners out don't don't want to do any, uh, any, any foreign trade as little foreign trade as possible uh, and uh, and just lock up anybody who uh, who's trouble. That's what that's what Braven wants to do. He wants to lock up everybody, I think. And of course, there's uh, Mad Vlad. He's laughing his head off. He's having a great time because he looks at he looks at the the, the UK, the state we're in, and how we were quite an important and and, and, and powerful part of. Uh, uh, of the EU, and now we've split off, and that's much his advantage. He probably was involved. Who knows? Uh, he's, it's thought that he, the Russians may well have been involved in in, in uh, financing the uh, the Leave campaign. And so it's all very sad, very depressing. But uh, it's difficult to see any any way out. But there is just one man who who can make a uh, make it work, and. Uh, 
he he looks like he's going to get his chance in, in a moment. He's going to he, he's going to he's going to make us uh, uh, um, uh, the fastest growing economy in the G7 uh, consistently. I think he said um, he, he's going to make it all well. He's going to make it all work. So I think we can just uh, keep our fingers crossed and uh, 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 look forward look forward to that time. But anyway. That's my potted history of uh, uh, Brexit. To uh, to return to my hats, if you are interested in my hats, please have a look at the website. They're uh, nicely made. They're made of cotton with a nice matching uh, polyester in, in, inside. They're uh, nine pounds nine time pence each, including postage. And uh, if you're going on the march in two weeks' time, uh, this is perfect, perfect headwear. So please, please have a look. It's ml44.com. If you've listened this far, thank you very much indeed. And uh, well, until next week, uh, bye for now.